So here's the sump guard, bash guard. It pays to take it off and have a look. Look at all the bits and pieces that have been in residence. Obviously not the nuts and bolts, but all the rubbish. Give that a good clean before we put it back on. All right, we're under the tractor, looking up to the right hand side. I hope you can understand what I'm doing here. We're, as I said, we're trying to remove a strainer. The pointer is going to show you there's a small bolt there, slipped, sorry, and there's another one up higher. It's hard to get a camera angle. If you could see what the camera's on, you'd laugh, but anyway, let's get closer. Oh, there's a lip in the bloody ground. Alright, the second bolt is way up here. So, no matter how I look at it from underneath, that filter's not going to come out. Upon further inspection, I see that I can undo that hose clamp there. And then this whole cylinder, I thought for a minute it was welded onto the chassis, but that's not the case. Under this hose here, if I just lift it slowly with a pointer, you'll see there's a bracket and that's the bolt for it there so I'm just gonna undo that bolt this hose clamp and sorry there is one more thing and let me adjust the camera and you got this big connection at the very bottom into that cylinder where the strainer lives so my goodness it's not something I want to be doing very often but it's a good learning tool to know and have a look and clean it this first time to be continued all right so this thing here in the book's called a hollow bolt and I've got lots of sockets a 32 mil was just a bit too big, and a, um, I don't have a 31, but on this, right here I've got, what is it? One and three sixteenths. So that, that's doing it for me, which is good. Mr. Hollow Bolt. Okay. Lights. All right, let's get this first hose clamp off. Alright, 18 mil in the ear. Yet again, a tight work area. It's bloody cold this morning. Let's see if I don't take any bark off me. Oh. Get a bigger break. Broke, broke it so to speak. 
off camera which is all right you can see the bolts out now and we're loose the idea now is to try and pull down hard enough disconnect the hose there or there that would probably be easier Wow, that come out. <laughs> Whew. It's bloody cold here this morning. It was 10 degrees when I woke up at 5 o'clock and it's nearly 9 o'clock. It doesn't feel much warmer. 14 I thought I heard on the radio, I don't know, but anyway too cold for handling metal parts. Let's have a look at this filter and housing now. So I've already pulled this housing apart and I'm not going to show you that because it was a rock show to say the least. I don't want you laughing too much at me but this is a better explanation of it out on the bench so you can see it. So remember there's a stainless steel strainer inside of this that obviously helps filter the hydraulic oil going around and around and from what I looked at the diagram here we go up into what I think is called the gear pump. Anyway that's not what we want to talk about so these two bolts came off the end Then you've got a, a cover with a little o-ring in it Then there's a spring that holds the strainer in place and I knew I kept these two dollar reject shop tools for a reason it's a magnet Okay, you can see it's a lengthy thing. What is it? Six inches long. Right, so I'm going to clean that in petrol. It's been recommended to me. See, there is a bit of gunk on there. I'm glad I had a look at it. And take note, it goes in with this solid piece to the outside. That's how the spring will keep it in. You'd be dumb to go that way, wouldn't you? Although I've done dumber things than that. So there's a strainer and as I said there's the hollow bolt that goes in underneath. Alright I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to give that a clean, give it all a clean and put it back on which is not something I need to show you. It's just the reverse of what we did to take it off. Okay. Just a few more things about the cleaning. I've gone the whole hog, so I cleaned all that in there, wiped the o-ring down, all this here, I haven't got to that yet, but in here it's pretty dirty, so I've got to get in there with a rag and a rod. Alright, so you can see there's grime and that down the end, pays to do it properly, because it's this is part of your hydraulic system. You want it working well. Okay. There we go, a bit of, bit of unleaded in a half a milk carton. It doesn't get any more technical than that, does it? Alright, there's all the sludge that come out of the filter. Amazing what you see at the end when I tip the fuel out.
just check this out folks if your front end load is something like mine there's a bit down the bottom that I've got to know really well have a look exactly bang your head here I'm telling you a lot of the times when I come out from under the tractor that there absolutely scones me a beauty on the head ouch alright I put it all back together and filled it up with oil as you've seen and left it overnight when I had a look this morning there's a tiny oil leak that I've introduced by pulling everything apart and I'll show you where it is and what I've done hopefully to rectify it so the oil leak is from here where the hollow bolt goes in if you remember and I'm not quite sure if it's coming out of that union there or that union there or both now I tightened that bolt up quite a bit and I had to, I had to stop eventually I thought you know, I'm going to break something here so I was thinking maybe the alignment wasn't correct and it wasn't able to tighten up properly there so I undid this bolt here which goes into the engine chassis area if you remember and that way there's a little bit of play there I just loosened it then I was able to just get, extract a little bit more turning out of that hollow bolt and hopefully that'll fix the problem we'll see how it goes so that oil leak wasn't anything major like oodles of it coming out just like a droplet every hour or so so we'll see how it goes all right there we go uh, I've successfully changed the oil clean the strainer all that stuff that encompasses part one and part two I hope you've got something out of it and uh, it was certainly a learning experience for me and by the way whilst I've been doing all those repairs on the tractor I'll show you what the hours meter shows on the tractor now have a look So as you can see, uh, I've got to the 100 hours mark, all's been well, and I'll do a short video on that after this video. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.